I bought a new bike and here it is. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below and give me a thumbs up if you like the look of this new bike. It's a brand new Fairlight Cycle Seacan. And as you know, if you've been following me on Instagram or seen some of my previous videos here on YouTube, I've been testing this company's new bike and there'll be a full review of that bike on the RACC website very soon. In this video, I wanna give you a quick bike check at some of the key components I've chosen to build up my new frame and fork. And I'll go into some of the reasons why I bought this bike and what I've got planned for it in the future, in a future video. But for now, let's just geek out on some of the equipment choices I've made and why I've made some of these uh, component choices. The biggest decision to make when building a new frame set is what group set or drivetrain to go for. And the biggest debate in the gravel and adventure bike market at the moment is one by versus two by. And as you can see, I've gone for a one by. That's down to personal preference. I've tested lots of gravel and adventure bikes with one by and two by. And there are pros and cons to both systems, really. There are merits for two by and one by, and really come down to personal preference and the terrain you're riding and the ratio of off-road to road riding you're doing. And for me, personally, I just like the simplicity of one by. I find it works really well for my requirements. Nice and easy to shift with just two buttons at the levers. One chain ring to worry about. You're much closer to being in the right gear at the back. You're not juggling two chain rings. Less things go wrong, and I like this clean, simple look of it, so it works for me. SRAM has really led the way with its one by fours and rather group sets, an out of the box hydraulic disc brake solution that works really well. But I want to go Shimano principally because I want to use DI2. I really like DI2 shifting and I want to try out the new Ultegra RX Mech. Now to use a Shimano one by setup, you have to get creative as I have done here. And that's because Shimano doesn't yet offer a dedicated out of the box one by group set. So you have to think outside of the box and get creative. And this build owes its inspiration to the Specialized S-Works Diverge I tested last year. So Specialized wanted to do a Shimano DI2 build, but had to get creative. So they paired Durace levers with a XCR rear mech, which allowed them to use a really wide range cassette and a single ring at the front. And it worked really well. And that's essentially what I've tried to replicate here. So for my build, I've gone for a Shimano brand new Ultegra RX DI2 rear mech. Now, it's not actually designed for a one by configuration like this. It's actually designed for two by, more for road and gravel gravel lights build so shimano doesn't recommend it for this setup but it works really well it's designed for an 11 of 34 cassette but as this little instagram video shows it works just fine on 11 of 40. so i think shimano being really conservative with their recommendation for their rear mech and as you can see it works with a much wider range of cassette and that means you don't have to go down a xt xcr rear mech although essentially they're the same as just badge differently but this fits in nicely and matches the shimano Ultegra. DI2 levers I'm using on the handlebars. So that's the, uh, the back end taken care of. Out front, I've gone for the brand new Praxis Zionte uh, carbon chain set. It's a really smart design. It's a modular design. So it's just three bolts holding the chain ring on and you take the three bolts off, take the chain ring off and put a double chain set option on there. So if I change my mind, I want to put a front mech on and go double, I can do that really easily without replacing the, uh, the crank set, just replace the chain ring. The chain ring are going for a 42 tooth size and it's using the narrow wide uh, design to keep the chain on and that combines with a clutch mechanism in the rear mech to hopefully keep the chain on and not lose my chain on really bumpy terrain. It's a nice looking crank set, really beefy but lightweight carbon fibre arms, nice external bottom bracket and I think it works really well and looks really good on the bike, a real centrepiece of the bike I think. A bit flash, a bit bling perhaps but I think it goes really well and matches the nice old Tegra rear mech. So that's the group set taken care of. I should actually mention when I'm building the frame, getting the internal DIT wiring was really simple. We didn't have any problems getting the frame built. Got the battery in the seat post there. It all came together really well. And, um, and so far I've been working really nicely. Aside from the group set, the other big decision to make when building a new frame set is what wheels and tires go for. And as you can see, I've gone for Mavic's All Road Pro wheels with matching tires. I've actually been testing these for the last six to eight months. And I put them on because I know what they're like, I know how they ride and handle, and they've been really durable. So I put them on as a starting point. So it's nice, reasonably lightweight aluminium wheel set. They're really strong, really reliable. I've not had any problems with them at all. The bearings are still running nice and smoothly, and they look good as well. The tyres are Mavic's own tyres. These are 40 mil wide, and the tread pattern strikes a good balance between kind of rolling resistance on the road, where they run along fairly quickly, but plenty of grip when you're riding an off-road terrain in the loose and dirt and dust and stuff with quite a good shoulder knob there. I'll definitely be testing other wheels and tires on this bike and I've actually already put some slick tires on this bike. Just yesterday before filming this I did a 300 kilometer Audax 
So I swapped out these wheels and tyres for a 32mm Bontrager slick tyre on some different wheels and fit some mud guards. And I'll show you a picture of that bike here. So you see how it looks. So that shows how versatile this bike is. You can also go in the other direction and fit a 2.2 mountain bike 650B tyre. So there are plenty of options and I will be exploring more of those options on this bike over the coming weeks and years as I get to know the bike more and find what wheel set works really well. But for me, for now, a 40mm gravel tyre is a really good balance. It really strikes that happy middle ground between uh, the bigger tyre for cushioning but also a smaller tyre for lower weight and the aerodynamics and, and the right comfort. So if you're wondering what tyre to go for, you're not sure uh, how wide you should go. Go 40, 42, and I think you'll be just fine on pretty much everything really. Moving on to the cockpit of the bike, as some people like to call it, or the handlebar and a stem in other words. I've gone for a Bontrager Isocore carbon handlebar. Really interesting design this, launched along with a Damani a few years ago. A carbon fiber construction, but with an elastomer material integrated into the layout to provide a bit more dampening, a bit more micro vibration dampening when you're riding over rough ground. I tested it for Race CC and I really liked it, I liked the shape, I liked the extra smoothness it offers and so I stuck on the bike, it works really well. 42 centimetres wide and no flare to drops, I'm not really a fan of flare drops on adventure bikes so I kept it fairly conventional with a road based setup. And fitting the handlebar to the bike is a nice MV carbon stem, just because I have one lying around, like you do. I've gone a bit shorter than I would normally because I like a bit of a kind of closer reach when I'm riding off road, a bit more control. I would go a bit longer if it's a road based setup, but for riding off road, going through tricky terrain, nice to have the handlebars a little bit closer. I still got a nice reach to the handlebars, so I'm not too cramped. So just give me that control I want when riding off road. Talking of control, I've got this really nice litter skins handlebar tape. I really like the kind of tactile grippiness of it. You can ride without gloves and still have plenty of purchase. And there's quite a bit of cushioning as well for a bit of extra uh, dampening on rough roads. As I mentioned, I've got old Tegra Di2 shifter hoods, really nice shape. The only thing I'm not real a fan of is this kind of knob here, which is the hose attachment there, which kind of just creates a bit of a bit of a knobbly bit there, really. It's nice if they can smooth it off a bit, but I'm not complaining. Really compact hood shape compared to SRAMs, nice to use. And um, I've got the shifter buttons all wired up to control that one rear mech. I've got a MV out front mount onto which is mounted my current computer of choice is the Wahoo Element Bolt and I've got a bell. Yes, I know bells aren't cool but I think it looks really nice and where I live in the Cotswolds there's horses and dog walkers so I need to let them know I'm coming. So that is my front end. Yes, there are quite a few uh, spaces on the stem and that's because when I'm building a new bike I don't cut the steering too, too short. I want to adjust the height just to get it right and then once I've done that I'll trim off the excess. So that's work in progress there. So don't judge me too much on that. So that's the front end. Let's move to the, uh, the back of the bike. To match that carbon MV stem up front, I've got a nice carbon MV seat post. I'll be testing this for Ray CC and there'll be a full review on the Ray CC website soon. But full carbon construction, including the head, uh, two bolt titanium hardware seat clamp, works with carbon rails, got an internal DIT battery held inside it and um, yeah, it works well. Very expensive, um, not the lightest in class, but it looks pretty good. Nice amount of layback, just what I need. On top of that is a fabric saddle. I'm a real fan of the fabric saddles. I just find it works really well. I really like the shape. I like the amount of padding. I like the scoop at the back. I like the amount of flex in the plastic base. And I like the bling carbon rails in this one. So a saddle that works really well for me. Um, saddle is a personal preference. You put on whatever saddle you want, but that's a saddle that works for me. And that's a saddle I fit to my bike. So yeah. That completes the finishing equipment. MV carbon stem and seat post, Bontrager carbon handlebar and a carbon fabric saddle. A lot of carbon, yes. A lot of carbon on a steel frame. So that's a quick bike check of my brand new Fairlight Cycle Seacan, a new gravel and adventure frame set I've actually bought with my own money after testing the company's new bike and liking it so much. And some of the components I've gone for and some of the reasons why I've chosen different equipment on the bike. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below if there's anything you'd change or if there's anything you recommend I do try on a bike. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback on the bike. And, um, but hopefully you like it and give me a thumbs up if you do. I'll go into more detail about why I've gone for a steel frame and why I've chosen this bike and what I've got planned for it in a future video. In this video, I just want to talk you through some of the equipment and really just to share it with you and show you my new bike. I'm you know, really happy it's come together really well and it's come out looking as good as it does look. If you're wondering how much it weighs, 
It's a 56R, this frame, and I put it on the scales and it came out at about 9.1, 9.2 kilograms without pedals. So that's a pretty decent weight for a steel frame with chunky tires and a, a decent kit. I've got a fair smatter in carbon on there, which definitely helps bring the weight down. But weight wasn't a primary focus of the bike. There are many other reasons for going for this bike, which I'll talk to you more about soon. But for now, that should be the first look. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button below the video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to that video. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.